not quite river treasure, but there's some treasure. That's 69. Oh, that's cool. We are on another metal detecting adventure today. I am actually with Mike of Great Finds, who is trailing me somewhere back in that direction. We're on an old farm that I've hunted over the years, and there's still stuff here. Uh, primarily, I'm looking for Civil War stuff, although there is an old home site that we might skirt around before the day's over. Lots of bones out here. I don't know if they are human, but I suspect they're not because... Well, somewhere over here, I saw a jawbone of a deer. Yeah, okay, so there's a jawbone, and that is a white-tailed deer. The rest of his skull is probably out there somewhere. So I wasn't going to do a video until I actually found something, and I found something pretty cool, I think, and I want you to tell me if you think it's pretty cool, too. Right in that hole. But first, this is what I've found so far. Uh, these are like scraps of brass. I'm not sure what they would go to, but they could easily date to the Civil War era or before. Uh, that's pretty much all I've found except for that and shotgun shells. But out of this hole, I got a nice deep iron signal. And there was some artillery work in here, some fighting during the Civil War. And sure enough, looky, this is an artillery shell fragment from the American Civil War. Now, judging by looking at what I'm seeing here, you can see it's exploded. And this is just a, a big old shell fragment. Um, this is where the fuse would have gone in right here. If you look, you can actually kind of see the threads a little bit where it would be threaded down in there. And I believe this is going to be part of what we call a Hotchkiss artillery shell, which actually I think Mike just found one of those recently at another location. Uh, this would have been a three-piece shell. There would have been three pieces that went to this. This is just part of the nose that exploded. Uh, so you, there's probably a dozen or 15 pieces of this out here somewhere if they haven't been dug in the past. Uh, but yeah, pretty cool. Genuine Civil War artifact. I'm on the board and we <laughs> are not skunked. So now we find ourselves in the graveyard. And uh, I like to call it the graveyard of unused equipment. <laughs> Just an equipment graveyard. Um, again, this is a farm I've been on before, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I showed you most of this stuff. Might have been 10 years ago, though. So I just want to show you a couple of really uh, cool pieces of equipment that are just kind of rusting away back here in the woods. Let's start with this little guy right here. This is some type of uh, hay equipment or, you know, wheat or anything like that. This is the cutting edge right here. We find a lot of these little things right here. These are teeth. Uh, to a sickle bar more. This is called a sickle bar. We find lots of those in the fields when we're metal detecting. They look like the shark's teeth. We, so yeah, so this is really old. Um, don't know how old. I'd imagine probably 1930s or ah, something like that. Mouse nest in there. Uh, could be 1930s, could be 20s, I don't know. Um, I imagine it's probably not much newer than that. This is another cool piece of farm equipment. Uh, with a piece of farm equipment inside of it because some beautiful wheels got a seat over there looks like a roll of wire so i'm not sure exactly what this thing would be maybe uh probably manure spreader if i had to guess when you tow this along uh when the wheels go around it makes these things go around and it draws a table back it goes around and around and manure will come off of it these things flip the manure patties up in the air and scatter them all over the field and i think this is the same thing right here it looks like the same thing right here another manure spreader um nice big old cool wheels great big cogs you know those iron gears i absolutely love this stuff the wooden deck that went down here and go around and around is, is pretty much rotted away but again you can see a lot of the pieces and we find a lot of this kind of stuff just scattered in, in farm fields from uh, the days gone by and again these are the blades that flip the cow patties or horse apples up into the air i'm also looking for morel mushrooms which i don't think are up yet here uh, but we're looking for those too good nice little squeaker here that actually fell back down in the hole i'm not sure what it is yet thought we'd go ahead and look at it together that's the equipment we just looked at over there and i'm noticing it's getting dark off to the west it's supposed to rain this afternoon so it is definitely coming anyway let's go ahead and take a look at this i'm pretty sure it fell back down into that loose dirt all right let's see what we got is it in there no nope. that's probably right there oh what's that this is, I was gonna hit it on the machine there. All right, that's just another chunk of like copper, 
brassy coppery stuff. It looks a lot like the uh, pieces that I found earlier today, which were actually a couple hundred yards that direction. But I'm actually working my way through the woods pretty quick because it's starting to sprinkle a little bit. And I want to at least get out in the field so we can beat it to the truck in case it, we have a downpour. But I just want to show you a couple more pieces of equipment before we hit the field. This is an interesting little thing here. You can see this is a like a hay rake. That thing would spin around and it, it would rake hay or straw into windrows. There's another one right there and that could be picked up easily and baled or piled into uh, hay stacks. Another thing over here, that's a planter of some sort, you know, for corn or something like that. A nice side plate on it. No dates though. Wood's all rotted away, unfortunately. This is a big hay baler over here after the the uh, rakes would uh, rake all the straw or alfalfa or hay up into um, rows you take this thing along and it would make bales so hay would go up in there and you could make bales of hay this is pretty old way before my time that's another spreader manure spreader uh, that's another rake right there I'm gonna get along to the side of this, see if there's any place. Yeah, there's a nice plate right there. It's a New Holland. I'll try to get a picture of that. It's interesting that this thing ran, I guess it must have run off of its own fuel instead of being hooked to the PTO of a tractor, you know, the power takeoff on a tractor, which is pretty much what everything is today. Yeah, so that's part of the motor right there, spark plugs. I'll get a quick picture of that. And uh, we'll go ahead and move on. You hear thunder over in that direction. Uh, if it rains, we're, we gotta leave. Okay, let's get back to it. Oh, you've seen these things. These are insulators for electric fences. Um, I guess they electrify the barbed wire and that. You don't see that too, too often. At least anymore. All right, let's get the machine if I can find it. And we will uh, get out in the field and see if we can see what's going on with that weather out there, those clouds. I don't wanna get caught in a downpour. My camera stuff is not waterproof. You see the skies are getting darker, more stormy. The wind's picked up, a little bit of rain. Temperature dropped like 10 degrees since I got here an hour ago. So we're going to work our way uh, over toward the truck and stay close to that in case we get a downpour. Just dug this cool little thing. Um, nice iron signal. It looks like some type of old hand forged hinge maybe. Not 100%. Well, might even be some type of tool, but it's really thin on that end. Much thicker on this end. So I'm not sure. Uh, could be a tool actually now that I'm looking at it. All right, let's go ahead. Uh, we're gonna pop through that little gap over there and circle the trucks right behind those old trailers right there. And I just wanna be close just in case. You never know with me, do you? <laughs> uh, just a few feet from where I found that last little iron thing. And uh, I got a nail here and you can see this is actually called, it's what's called a rose head nail. Uh, the top of this went up like a little pyramid. That tells me that it's a very early nail, uh, way before the Civil War era. Uh, which drives with the uh, house that's on this farm it was built in the 1700s so it's probably from that era nice little nail not exactly what we're after today but it does have some history to it doesn't it? a little story we can tell about that oh let me just say this since we're here these are all hand forged by blacksmiths on the farm typically uh, or the local village and they would make these nails square and on the top here they'd flatten it out and then they, when it was hot they'd take the hammer and they'd hit it i think four times to kind of make it pop up in the air a little bit and i guess it gives it some strength so you can hit this with a hammer and drive it into uh, wood but it's called a rose head nail uh, newer nails like you know by the time the civil war rolled around 1840s 50s 60s the square nails were flat on top they were made with machines but this is a handmade nail one by one i'm still in the area where the rosehead nails are and digging as much of the bigger iron as i can hear and this is a uh, part of a knife this is this would have been the handle out here this would have been the blade so it's probably like i guess a table knife uh, really heavy probably hand forged as well find a lot of hand forged stuff right in this area so i'm going to stay here and i'm going to keep digging this stuff uh, hopefully there could be a nice old coin or something in here. Now I see like colonial era coin. I suspect this has been hunted pretty hard though because I'm just hearing the iron right now. I see something right here that looks interesting. Probably just a rock. It's a lot of limestone rocks out here. <laughs> I look like a bullet, didn't it? But it doesn't give a signal, so yeah, it's just a rock. 
Well, I found Mike. He's out there. The sky kind of cleared. Well, I didn't clear up, but the clouds went over and the rain passed. So uh, we'll have some more time to dig, although it was much chillier than it was when I first started. We didn't have sleeves on. It was so warm when we got here, but um, storms are coming this way. So when they pop over the mountains over there, uh, we'll have to see what's coming. And if it's a baddie, we have to haul. A nice, big, deep signal here. And I was going along, seeing how, trying to figure out how big it is, thinking it could be a cannonball or maybe a musket. But you know what? <laughs> it just keeps going, doesn't it? Then I looked up. See, they're buried power line or gas line somewhere under our feet, and we can hear it. In fact, it's making the metal detector go a little bit nuts. If you look at the numbers, they're jumping all around. So that's whatever's underneath here making it do that. Uh, so sometimes, and I'm an all metal, so it's a little unstable anyway. But sometimes when you're out and your machine's acting weird, you look around, if there's any overhead power lines or electric fences or buried uh, phone cables or, you know, just something like this, which is probably a gas line, I guess. I don't know for sure. Um, but, you know, that's probably six feet in the ground and we can hear it just fine. Can't we? <laughs> Let's get out of here. I don't see if Mike's found anything yet. I might as well get a jacket too. The rig's over there. It's not too far away. A nice deep signal there I thought might be like another shell fragment. So I went and dug it up. And turns out it's an iron rod. And I'm going to suspect that is part of a ramrod for a musket. It's just about the right size. And we're in an area where I have found, you know, a lot of bullets and Civil War stuff in the past. So I'm pretty sure that's going to be like a, a piece off a ramrod. Um, yeah, let's go with that for now. What do you say? <laughs> it sounds good to me, chick. Just okay, stop talking. So the weather got nicer and I uh, popped back into woods, different woods than I was earlier this morning. And I just found my first bullet. This is a Burnside carving bullet. And I was trying to figure out if it was dropped or fired. And I think it's probably dropped, not 100%. You can see it's made, it's not made out of pure lead. So it's kind of crumbly a little bit on the surface of the bullet. But yeah, so that's my first uh, Civil War bullet. If I find one or two more, I'll give Mike a call and get him in here because we're not really having much luck out in the fields. Um, but yeah, so just give me a couple minutes. Let's see how we do. Just a couple. So I was going through the woods and I came upon some scuffed up areas and I said to myself, I bet you old Mikey's in here in front of me. And sure enough, I ran into Mike. He's right there and he's got a couple bullets in his bag. And I just found a little piece of lead. I don't know if it's melted or fired. I suspect kind of fired maybe, but... Uh, so we're going to search this area up in here a little bit. Uh, this is... Uh, it was actually here not too... We, we were here not too long ago. And I found a, a bullet wipe or worm right around here somewhere. And that was that little curly Q pigtail looking iron thing that soldiers would use to get uh, the musket balls out of the barrels if the gun wouldn't fire or for some reason they didn't want to fire it. That's how you unloaded them. So let's get to it. What do you say? Something a little bit better than a little hunk of fired lead. <laughs> it's kind of thick down in here, but we're going to give it a shot. And I just came across another fox turtle, dead box turtle. Now, you know, I've talked about these quite a bit in my videos recently, how I'm finding so many of these dead now out in the woods that I fear that the population is going to completely disappear. They may become extinct. I mean, I find them everywhere. And those things take a long time to grow that size. They don't just do that in a season, you know what I mean? So don't, don't feel good about that at all. So I worked my way all the way through the woods and I'm back by a like subdivision. Uh, you see a bunch of houses there and a bunch of trash in the woods I put back here. But I did just find my first round ball of this expedition. Uh, probably a Civil War era uh, musket ball, 54 caliber. And it's dropped. So that tells me the soldiers were standing right here letting stuff fall out of their pockets. Let's see if they dropped anything else. What do you say? Well, I got a little unpleasant surprise here. I had a signal and I dug it up and there's a bumblebee. Uh, there's probably a bumblebee nest right here underground. They live underground a lot of times. So we're going to uh, we're going to leave him alone and get away from his nest. Because if this had been summertime, I would have been covered with them. Screaming, running through the woods, batting my head and dropping my gear. And I know that because I've done that before. <laughs> it's probably a little chilly right now for flying anyway, so... We're safe. Not quite river treasure, but there's some treasure. That's 69. Oh, that's cool. USS Dwight E. Eisenhower, 69. 
John. Yeah, I will save that, Zippo. Huh. I don't know if it's actually that old, but I guess it's possible. Maybe you can tell me. Is it that old? <laughs> I mean, it looks new, really, but I guess somebody could have lost it five years ago. We'll definitely keep that one. Yeah. Yeah, that was my present to you. I found that already. I threw it down there. Yeah, we're, we're getting ready to head out. And uh, Mike found a bullet right down there, fired a bullet, so it's, you know, right here. So I figured we was try to uh, dig a little bit. I dug a rifle casing. I threw it down there for him to refine. But right here, I just dug a flat button. So it's good, two good targets that came out of this pathway right here where the uh, gas line is. So I don't know about Mike, but I might hang around here just a few more minutes. What do you think? Yeah, I think we should. Okay. Listen, old chick. Mike might have another one. Uh, maybe everybody avoided this uh, because of the interference with the underground activity. The easiest place to swing if we're back in the <laughs> I <room>. know. <laughs> it's always that way, isn't it? I guess we're going to go ahead and head on out of here. We did pretty good today. We each found a few things. I can see a storm coming over the mountains, and I want to get back to the truck and all safe and sound before the thunder and lightning hits us. I can actually hear it rumbling off in the distance, and you can see it off in the distance. We could probably have about 10, 15 minutes before it gets here, so we've got plenty of time. <laughs> if I can't get Mike <laughs> to quit digging, but we'll let him dig. We'll just head back to the truck and watch him get wet. <laughs> we'll see you on the next one, I hope. She'll shake the coins from your pocket, take your gold chain and your locket. Mother Earth has no sympathy. She'll take the ring from your hand and bury it in the sand and keep it for eternity. Mother Earth, she's got her secrets she's promised to keep hidden in her dirt or deep in her creek. Mother Earth, she ain't saying exactly what she's saving, where it is or what it might be. Mother Earth, you are my lady, my big round baby. I'll rock you until I go to sleep. She don't care if you're dying.